<laughs> well, damn! Literally, <laughs> we're stuck in a dam over here. It goes quite a far distance off that way. You can just barely make it to the other side. And I'm not going to make it in that vehicle there. It's very low, so I'm going to have to turn around. Oh, this is Africa. The struggles of herping. You can't even make it on the road because it looks like more of a crocodile pond <laughs> than a road in fact it's absolutely crazy speaking of which i shouldn't be about boot deep in this water because yes there are crocodiles in this area and i would love to find some but don't worry i i've checked out the area it will be fine well where i was standing is fine first little critter of the evening hey little guy as you can see, we're right by the ocean. Where are you going? Okay, there he goes. <laughs> Second critter find, and it's the first time I've ever, ever seen one of these guys. Look at that. This right over here is the giant African land snail. I've found so many shells of these guys before, but I've never actually found a live one. So he's here on the road. So I think I might have to pick him up and move him over because there are cars that come on this road from time to time. But how cute is he? Sorry, little dude, I'll have to move you. He's huge. How big is that for a snail? Like, whoa, that's crazy. So cool. Come big boy. Look at that, there's a car coming now. So I gotta go put him on the other side. I oh, know. It doesn't seem like we got something good now. What is this? <laughs> it's just some plants. I thought that was gonna be like a dead bird or something. Okay, I'm, I'm really grateful that. That's just plants. Just a little gecko. Hey guy. There we go. Whoa. Oh gosh, Bryce, you are not quick enough there. I don't want to grab his tail. <laughs> we got him. He's like, oh, I'm going to bite you, Bryce. Okay, 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 okay. Oh my goodness, you are cute. You are so cute. So I'm going to put on the screen what exact species this gecko is because I don't know everything and I always want to learn. So I'm going to take some photos or just take some video and show some friends and ask them because I've got some really clever friends that know a lot more about geckos than I do. I spent a lot of time working on snakes and stuff but I'll get to the geckos and the spiders and the frogs. I gotta know as much as I can about everything. Come on, let's go this way. Go inside there, it's a nature reserve. It's nice. No, go there. Bye. Bye. Crocodiles seem to travel quite a fair distance on land even even though they have like a whole estuary system to go through sometimes they like exploring and going across land finding different water sources so this little bit of water that is flooded the road is actually quite cool for some crocs but i haven't seen any here in fact i'm gonna head back right now because i can hardly see with this light pointing in my face at the moment but i can't see the road don't worry i'm gonna head back because i'm really tired we've been traveling all day and been out here for only about an hour herping not found much at all but it should be more promising tomorrow evening if it rains ah oh, this is like paradise on earth right here i absolutely love it this is where my heart lies in the middle of the african bush vault it's so cool look over there these are African hippo, and yes, there's another one just ahead. I'm not wanting to spook him out whatsoever because, yes, they can damage the car, but these guys are pretty used to humans as they. decided to go away there because he started looking at me and we don't want to take any chances with the vehicle yo how incredible is that it's nice and warm here nice and hot in fact let's go find some herbs Doing something like this requires a lot of respect and a lot of knowledge about these animals. I let the animal come up to me rather than going into its personal boundary. Hooray! I am so stoked right now. I made it to this little pristine like coastal strip in the middle of nowhere right now. I've been hiking for a couple hours looking for gaboon vipers because that is the target species for today. Uh, well for this whole trip, I really want to find our East African Gaboon Viper. It's not going to be easy. For the past four or five years I've been coming here every single year for about a week 
trying to find this animal and it's so elusive and its cryptic coloration and patterning does not help it out or does not help me it helps the snake it's not going to be easy as i said but also it's a vulnerable species here in southern africa so it does get exploited for exploited for the wildlife trade which isn't a good thing it's a protected species i'm also in a beautiful pristine habitat that i'm just stoked to be in so either way it's a win-win for me but i really want to find that gaboon viper wow this is absolutely spectacular i've literally had to crawl on my belly just to get here blown away by the wonder and the awe and the amazingness of this incredible subtropical jungle. Whoa, I just got a whole lot of water in my boots. So as you can see, I'm in a different terrain right now from like where I would normally find Gaboon Vipers. Not that I found any, but you're not going to find any here. I'm in a difficult area to film and that is why you're up in a tree right now. It's not that easy herping and filming yourself because you spend hours and hours at a time trying to find these animals. What do I see there? Okay, it's just a leaf. Hours and hours at a time trying to find these animals and generally you find nothing. It's a lot of terrain that you have to cover and a lot of terrain that's not friendly on camera gear, especially water like this. I'm surrounded by water. This area is perfect for what I'm looking for now, which is Varanus Nilotic is the Nile water monitor. Just behind you here, there's actually like a little ravine. They sit above the mangrove, in the mangroves above the ravine and then as soon as like a predator or someone scary like me comes along they just pop down into the water and they're gone you're not going to be able to catch them it's not that easy to find them i've spent days and hours every day looking for anything and it's not that easy to find stuff you you go through all these different trials of walking through the swamp marsh areas trying to find something and generally you don't find anything most of the time i see stuff but i don't get to catch it on camera because my camera is on my backpack or in my backpack on my back because i don't want it to get destroyed out here i've got two hands nobody's filming for me then i see an animal and i'm unable to catch it and you don't see that so there's a lot of that that goes along and that's why you don't see so many animals yet in this video hopefully that changes though okay so there's no other way but to cross this little marshland and get to where i want to go other than to get my boots wet i don't like that because they don't dry out easily then they start to stink because of the swamp water and it's official i am trudging down in knee deep water totally worth it to find animals i gotta come back here in the evening because this will be filled up with frogs. And because these boots are in fact waterproof, the water is staying inside of them and not getting out. So now I'm walking with extra weight. Wow, so the spot that I know of that I came here just to chill and relax has become completely submerged in water. We got to check out for crocodiles. So don't do what I do. Look at this little nice place. Generally, this is all land over here. And then just over there is the, the water system. But right now, it's all covered in water. It's the heat of the day. I'm not gonna find any herps out now. So why don't I just have a little swim? But watch out, there shouldn't be any crocodiles here. Uh, but you never know, I mean, I'm not gonna make too many splashes because that is what attracts them I don't know how close the edge is so I just gotta watch out and I was gonna take off my shoes but I'm no longer gonna do that because I don't want to stand on anything but and I've already got my boots wet so why not So, turns out I can't actually make it that far out. I could, but I don't want to get tangled up in all this stuff. So, all that out there is in fact like this seaweed type stuff. I don't even actually know what it is. But it's these long strands that's actually quite easily, easy to get tangled up in. And yeah, so at least I cooled off now. That was very nice and refreshing. As 
I went further out, it got nice, nice and cool. Now that the morning herping trip is over, I'm gonna go and rest because you get up early to go and herp and then the reptiles and the herps go away at about lunchtime or in the heat of the day basically and a lot of other creatures start to come out at night again. So we will be back in the evening to try find some more animals. Road cruising, that's probably the best and easiest way to find things. <laughs> Don't you always love seeing splashes? I'm pretty sure that is a fish. <laughs> I'm almost 100% certain, don't worry. Crocodiles! They don't seem to like this <laughs> surrounding so much, but then again, it's amazing in fact. I don't think we've had copious amounts of water like this in years. Look at this. That was almost a fail with your nice camera, Bryce. This is a thorn tree above my head and I don't want to get caught on it, obviously. Whew, made it out alive, boys and girls, with no gaboon adders inside, sadly. <laughs> I'm making such a noise now, but don't worry, it's all the animals are resting and sleeping. Do we go left? Do we go right? We go left. That's another thing, in the African bushveld, you got to keep your wits about, you got to remember you got to stay alert, you got to know where you're going because <laughs> like that you can get lost and not be able to find your way back. So, especially when you're hiking kilometers and kilometers into the open bush fault in the middle of nowhere. Check your surroundings, make sure no crocodiles, no, <laughs> you know, no snakes you want to catch. And then you trudge through this deep, deep, knee deep water and you feel how it's become heated up by the sun and how gross that is because that's like a pool for bacteria to grow because it's not flowing water so i'm not really on a path i'm making my own path up as i go but you've got to remember where you started off and you've got to keep your words about you probably not the easiest thing to do but growing up doing this as i said that i, <laughs> I lost where i'm going not exactly, but I just didn't choose the best of route. That's why you always got to be alert and ready for anything. Check it this. So this over here is some old hippo dung. Dung is a fancy word for poop. It's old, it's dry. Ah, look at these beautiful open plains. Stunning, isn't it? 